Now, in addition to China and the U.S., there are also confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Japan, South Korea, Thailand. Uh, travelers heading to the United States on direct or connecting flights from Wuhan, China, where this virus began, will be screened at JFK in New York, as well as LAX and San Francisco International Airport out west. For more on all of this, we are now joined by Dr. Anne Ramoyne. She is a professor at the Department of Epidemiology at UCLA, also director of their Center for Global and Immigrant Health. Doctor, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Um, how concerned should we be by this coronavirus now that we have had a confirmed case in the United States? Well, that's a really good question, Ashley. I think that there is great cause for concern about this virus. We have uh, now a case in the United States. We know that uh, it is passed from human to human and that uh, cases can land anywhere in the world. Well, and that's a big question, of course, is how do you stop this? At what point does the World Health Organization start to put in travel restrictions? Um, is there a number that they look at? I mean, once uh, the horse is bolted, it's very difficult to, to contain. Correct. Outbreaks are like wildfires. You need to stop them when they're at the spark, not when they've become a, an inferno. Right now, the World Health Organization is scheduling to meet to determine whether or not this is a public health emergency. And there are many, many factors that go into this uh, decision. We'll find out more in the next, in the coming days. You know, things could change very, very rapidly. This morning, we now know that there's a case here in the United States. So there's a great deal we still are learning, and uh, there are many, many factors that will go into this decision. What are the symptoms, doctor? And, and uh, you know, what is the fatality rate, to put it that way? Because I understand what I've seen from China. It could be 8 to 9 percent of those who contract it. It, it, it can, can be fatal. Um, maybe you can explain some of that. Well, we don't really have answers at this point. We have many more questions than answers. Right now, we know that six people have died, that there are at least 300 people that we know of that are infected. Because we're just beginning to get data in here, we still don't know the, the scope of this disease. It could be much greater than we, uh, than we know. Uh, we're depending upon really good disease surveillance. Uh, is there a, a, a treatment for this? Is there a cure, so to speak? So this disease is a coronavirus, mm. and we saw this with SARS uh, 17 years ago, MERS more recently, mm. and right now there are no vaccines available for this family of coronaviruses. There are many that are being tested, but none that are actually available to um, be used in a public health campaign. And this, so, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it spreads, if I, if I read it correctly, from person to person. Correct. We now know, based on the information that was shared uh, earlier today, that this virus can spread from person to person. And in fact, one person infected 14 healthcare workers oh. in China. And, and, you know, how reliable are the reported numbers out of China? I say that because sometimes when this happens in one particular country, it's very hard to get to the, ver to the, to the, to the true scope of what they're facing. Well, I think that China probably doesn't know at this point. Mm. We have to be able to, to understand that right now they're putting in public health measures. They're alerting hospitals. What we do know is that this is very different than 17 years ago during the SARS outbreak when China did cover up the fact that there was an outbreak ongoing and allowed the virus to spread out of control before public health uh, officials were invited mm -hmm. in and control measures were put in place. We know that China is doing a really good job right now of sending messages to, to health care professionals, to hospitals. They want to know how many cases there are, and there are really good tools out there to determine how it's spreading. What advice would you give very quickly, doctor, to someone who maybe has a trip planned to that part of the world? And does, does wearing a mask do anything to prevent uh, the spread? That's an excellent question, whether or not a mask can mm. help prevent the spread. Right now, we don't know exactly how this disease is spread. Uh, it's very possible that it could be respiratory, in which case a mask could help. But you have to know how to put that mask on and to keep it on uh, and not to touch your face, not mm. to touch your eyes. So, the, you know, a mask could potentially help as we learn more about this. Uh, but I think everybody has to weigh the, the risks right now of, uh, you know, if they would like to, if they want to travel or if they don't. And unless they're going to, to um, a place where we know that there have been cases at this point, I think that, uh, you know, uh, the, the advice is still go ahead, travel where you need to travel, but watch the news, listen to the public health messaging, right. and take 
public health precautions, taking good infection control precautions, washing your hands, not touching your face all the time, being mindful of people around you is very right. important in this case. Great advice, Dr. Anne Ramoyne. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. Really appreciate your, uh, your expertise today. Thank you.